morning. Welcome to Virtual Church. So glad you're here. Happy 2021. Isn't that fantastic? Boy, I am just so glad about that. And so this is what I'm going to talk about uh, today, is I'm going to talk about that it's a new year, and it's an opportunity for a new you, a new me. This is one of the things I really love about the science of mind philosophy. No matter how many times we start and fall down, we can always start again. And so here it is, 2021. We have an opportunity for a fresh new start. How many of us, if we think back to when this whole COVID thing started 10 or so months ago, how many of us, if we knew it was going to last this long, we'd have done something differently? Isn't that an interesting thing to think about? I mean, like, okay, if I knew this was really going to happen, I'd have built a stage in my garage so I could practice my tap dancing. I'd have learned the guitar, picked up a foreign language, um, maybe learned to cook Moroccan food. I don't know, just all kinds of things that I've always thought someday I would, someday I would, someday I would. And so I want to take that same little piece of procrastinating and not do that as I look toward a new year. What I want to look, as I look toward the new year, I want to think about, okay, what is it that is the best within me that I aspire to bring forward into the new year? What are the areas where I, as an individual, seek to express, perhaps in ways that I haven't fully expressed before, or in ways that I've just sort of dipped my toe into the pool, but now I'm really, really ready to jump in? See. I think we're, we are really the creative architects of our, of our own life experience. And just like Louise Hay used to always say, and I've always loved this, Louise would say, now is the point of power. Now is the moment where we can do something, where we can make a different choice, make a different decision. Now is when we can begin to start to create something that we haven't created before. So for all of us, the way I believe it works is that we have to do our part, whatever our part is. And our part, I think, is everything we humanly know how to do, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. We do all of our part to move in the direction we feel we're supposed to go, and then, having prayed and done all of that in good consciousness, we take our hands off and let God be God. So we do our part, and God does God's part, I believe. Now, in the science of mind, one of the things that I think it's important to remember is that God has no favorites. We do not believe in luck. Luck is labor under correct knowledge. So yes, it certainly seems that fortune favors the bold and fortune favors those who are prepared. So I would ask you, what are you preparing for? What are you preparing for? Are you preparing for stuff to hit the fan? Or are you preparing for things to get better for you? Are you preparing for tragedy or are you preparing for comedy? I mean, you know, it's, 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 it really, really is up to us. And I think that as we move forward, knowing that we are spiritual beings and we're all here to express our creative divinity that is within us, I think we have to take responsibility for what it is that we feel we're going to uh, be expressing in this new year or what we'd like to express, or what we'd like to experience. We have to take responsibility for that, uh, what I'll call heart's desire. But actually, I don't think it's our heart's desire. I think it's our soul's desire, something that deep within us is seeking to come forward in a way that it never has before. And I don't know what that is for you, but I have some inkling of what it might be for me, and I suspect you perhaps have inklings as well. You know, if we blame other people or outside circumstances. We're just giving our power away. And I know it's easy to feel resentment or anger or feel like we've been victimized by somebody else. But look at it this way. Your creativity put you in the situation. And I believe that same power, principle, and presence within you, if you work with it intelligently, will get you out of that situation into something even better. Hmm? Consider the blank slate of a new year. Isn't that just a great thought? Like the slate is blank. We could start right now. It doesn't matter what you've done on the first or the second. Start right now. The slate is completely blank. I love that. What will I create with a whole new year? What will you create with a whole new year ahead? Now, there's 
no guarantee before we take a risk. I get that. But if you limit what you give, you limit what you get. Right? So we can't completely avoid disappointment. I know everybody wants to avoid disappointment. We all want to avoid the painful things. But you know, the disappointment, it seems to me, often shows me where I need to build my faith. When things don't come through, when they don't burst forth into manifestation or form, it shows me it's like, oh, I didn't quite have the faith I needed there. I need to work on my faith. I need to build my faith in an even greater way. So science of mind says, look, your thought creates. We all understand that. And maybe a way to underscore that is to say that whatever you clearly focus on with consistency is what you are contributing to creating, what you clearly focus on con with consistency. So I think that that which is within us, that seeking to come forward, that um, soul desire is probably, um, we have some passion connected to that, uh, maybe even a yearning, an intense longing. Now, I don't know, maybe we've put it on a back burner, or maybe not, you know, but we are all creating all the time, and, and you know, science of mind would say, do not kid yourself, do not think that you are not in the process of creating all the time with your life energy. That would be your, with your thought, with your intention, uh, with your action, with your speech. So we don't want other voices to talk us out of something. You know, to tell us, oh, you've got to be realistic, or you're thinking too big. I just don't want you to be hurt. You know, I, you know, that's more about other people than it is about us. Here's the bottom line. Our thought and our intention create, right? So first, for the new year, I think, all right, if we wanted it all to just be more different than we could possibly imagine in a good way, I would say get your attention off yourself, think of somebody else, and do something for them. That's one of the best things you could do to shift the energy. Just find someone in your life that you could do something for, and that will shift the energy. The other thing that will really help shift energy is if we maintain a consciousness of counting our blessings. Now, look, I know people in our community have many people have really, really struggled during this last year. And not to diminish people's struggle, but I also know we also have an enormous amount of blessings that we should be in the process of counting all the time. Because what you focus on increases. If you count your blessings, blessings increase. If you count your miseries, miseries increase. What do you want to choose, huh? So, Ernest teaches us in the science of mind that we have to have conscious and subjective agreement in order to demonstrate. And I think so often the reason that we don't is because we have sabotaging thoughts and beliefs that work against us. And our job actually is to recognize where am I sabotaging myself? Where is my thinking contrary to what I say I want to experience, to how I want my life to be? Because you know, whatever we're saying into the universal mind, it says yes. The law just responds, as Ernest says, with mechanical regularity. So if the subconscious is always saying yes, it seems to me that that conversation I have going on in my head all day long is really important. So I should be saying things that I want my subconscious to really embrace, like, it's good for me to be healthy. It's good for me to be healthy. I really enjoy being healthy. It's good for me to be abundant. I enjoy my abundance. You know, it's good for me to be creatively expressed. I enjoy the creative expression that I'm engaged in. See, because the subconscious is always working on what we dwell on. What do you dwell on? Think about that. And of course, my question for us today is as we look at a year ahead, 2021, ask yourself, how good could I stand it to be? And you say, well, I can, I, I, I'm really willing for 2021 to get great. I could deal with a really terrific 2021. Well, because how good you can stand it to be is exactly as good as it's going to get. So how good are you willing for 2021, 2021 to be for yourself, but also for everyone else? See, I don't, I don't just want to be peaceful myself. I want everybody who wants to experience peace to be peaceful. I don't want to just have my needs met. You know, th yeah, that's nice, but what about everybody around me? I want everybody to have their needs met. 
I don't just want my consciousness to be peaceful. I want everybody to have a peaceful, joyful, loving existence. See, I think part of it is we have to make the circle bigger because what you're saying to the universe is what I want for other people is what I want for myself. Now, pay attention to that because if you want to see other people suffer, if you want to see other people not prosper, that's what you're telling the universe you want for yourself. Because the universe doesn't see any difference between us and them. Right? How good can you stand it to be? Now, if there's something that you feel like you're really here to do or express, is there a way that you can connect what you are here to do or express as a contribution to the world? How will what I want to experience or achieve make the world a better place? How does it bless the world? How does it benefit other people? And if you could focus on that, I guarantee you, you will move forward with that soul desire. You, know, you want to make your desire a contribution to the world. You know? uh, and I think for each of our desires, I, I just find for myself, what I do is I like to make an affirmation for each desire or intention. So mine might be like, I live in a world of peaceful, loving people. I live in a world of peaceful, loving people. I live in a world of peaceful, loving people. Hmm? You know, I think that our imagination as we grow spiritually is a really, really important tool. Um, and that imagination has the capacity to expand our soul desire until it can't be contained and it has to insist itself into being. Isn't that a fabulous thing? It's just like, it's so big within us, it insists on coming forward into the physical universe, right? So I think that, that within us, within our mind, is the birthplace of that possibility, and that's what we have to feel. I know, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, I know. Yeah, buts are, are, they're weeds, and weeds need to be cut down. They're like the negative naysayers in our life, you know? No more obstacles there. Are you serious about what it is you hope to experience, achieve in 2021. If it's really important to you, I believe that you will put your life in order and you will make this a priority, you know? Um, because I think we have to commit to doing everything in our power to make it happen. We do all of that with really good consciousness and then we let go, we step back and say, okay, I've done everything I know how to do. I'm maintaining good consciousness, a good attitude, a positive outlook. I've spoken my word. Now it's time that the law of mind action, the basic law of consciousness does its part, right? You know, I, I, I think we can't be lazy and flaky about this. You know, uh, this means I have to organize my life to some extent around what it is I'm trying to achieve and experience, you know? What I realized recently, this was big for me, is that I have to organize my life around my desire, not try to fit my desire into my crazy life. You know, because what that does is that already makes the desire smaller and, and, and like I'm trying to manage it. And I, and I think that actually is a disservice to the desire itself. Yes, absolutely. Any dream that we have requires time. I think it requires space, and it requires some of our best attention on a regular basis, right? Not just a fleeting thought, oh, I'd like to experience this, oh, I'd like to have that. I don't think a lot's going to come from that. But I think if, if we give it good attention on a regular basis, we, because what this does is this says to the universe, my dream, my goal is valuable because I give it time consistently. I think as we move forward, probably for all of us, we have to eliminate sabotage. You know, whether that's um, having sabotaging people around us who are so negative all the time, or that we do something or say something to ourselves that limits us. It was huge to me to realize that my desire does not need the approval of anyone else because that desire, I believe, comes from the spirit of God within us. It's what spirit, which is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself, is trying to do through us. And the way it's going to experience and achieve that is through our desire. So we don't need anybody else's approval. You know, the only place... <laughs> Success comes before work is in the dictionary, right? 
So there are no free lunches, right? You do the work, you pay the price in consciousness, and then we see some results. You know, and so I understand sometimes we don't see the results, so we have to keep doing the work in consciousness and do the work in consciousness and do the work in consciousness. Somebody said to me recently, they said, well, what is that work in consciousness? And I said, change your thinking, change your life, spiritualize your thought, pray, meditate. Make yourself into a vessel so that something greater of a higher order can move through you freely and unencumbered. I think, you know, I get it. We all have obstacles, but to not have the obstacles, we have to identify and eliminate whatever it is that takes us away from our greater desire. You know, is there physical discord that doesn't let you proceed forward? Is there some emotional drama in your life that doesn't let you move forward? Is the mental pollution in your head so great that you can't work on your desire? Or is it just everyday fears and lethargy and torpor? Laziness. You have to find the time and the discipline to establish the order your dream requires to be able to grow. I wish I could do that for you. I wish some days I could do it for me, to tell you the truth. But are, are your attachments, this was my realization, are your attachments, are my attachments worth holding on to if they prevent me from realizing my greater dream? Oh, and of course the answer is no, they're not. Permission comes from within you. That's the only place the permission's gonna come from. So if you've been waiting for somebody out here, somebody in the world you love or respect to give you permission, they're not. You have to do that for yourself. Why? Because principle is nobody outside can give you something that you are unwilling to give yourself. Now, of course, I'm not saying you've got to eliminate anything that's important in your life. I'm saying you've got to eliminate what sabotages your progress and smothers your dream. And I think if we do that, that really reveals whether or not we're serious. And it's great if you are, but if you find out you're not serious, terrific, you're off the hook. That means you get to have a whole other dream. So what it takes, I think, is a willingness to let go. Let go of what? Oh my gosh, well, it, you know, it falls into a few categories. It's going to be fear or anger or sadness or guilt. But are we really willing to let that go? To let go of whatever it is that currently seems to block us, limit us, hold us back, keep us small? Ask yourself, how can I prepare my consciousness for what my soul is trying to bring forward into my life? How can I best prepare myself for that? Now ask yourself individually, am I giving my desire some of my best energy? Am I making it a priority in my life? Is there room in my life for what I say I desire? Is your desire at the top of your list of things you need to attend to every day? Am I unwilling to let go of the past? Is there somebody I don't want to forgive, including myself? You have to decide, we all do, to give ourselves permission to express what's deep inside of us. The universe says yes. If the universe didn't say yes, God wouldn't have given us the idea. So it's up to us where the universe gives us a big yes, we have to give a big yes back to the universe. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now, each and every one of us gathered here, grateful for a new year, a new beginning, a new opportunity, a fresh, clean slate for each and every one of us. And so in this moment, recognizing that we are one with God and that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, I speak the word for us that yes, the slate is clean. And we are about the Father, Mother, God's business of creating a life that is absolutely filled with meaning and fulfillment. I know that life reveals our heart's desire, the desire of our soul, something about what we came here to express, something about what we came here to give into humanity, into the world. And I know it's a blessing that comes forth from each and every one of us that makes the world a better place to be. 
So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends and parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear, and we know that right where they are, the principal power and presence of God surrounds them. It fills them. God within is the most true, real thing about each and every one. We let our prayer be a blessing energy in the world that we live in. So emanating out from our heart and mind, emanating out from our consciousness, we wrap our world in an energy of light and love and healing and peace and abundance for all people everywhere. We bless our church. We bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together in consciousness today, that we as a spiritual community come together, and because we join as a group, we are lifted in a way that wouldn't happen without us all together. So I'm grateful for everyone here in the world of Zoom and Facebook, or if you're on the phone with us, we just know that we are all connected and we will be together again in person soon. With a heart that's full, I say thank you, God. I release this word, and so it is. Amen. All right.